Hello! Hi, happy Teaching Tuesday! We're back! Yes, today <laughs> we're diving right into talking about mortgage rates. Those things are increasing and we want to tell you all about it. I've got some news coming up about April 1st, so hang in for that. But first, well, but first, if you've been watching or listening to the news at all, you know that we've already seen our first um, increase in interest rates um, this year. And in all fairness, like we did a little bit of research, and since Christmas, they've gone up a half a percent. Yeah. Which doesn't seem yeah. like a lot, but we're going to dive into exactly what that means to you as a home buyer. Yes. Um, so we reached out to our favorite local lender mm -hmm. to yep. get the scoop. Yes, Matt Reiner. He is our local guy. You've probably heard us talk about him before. He's awesome. Great resource. Yeah. Wonderful. You want to you want to dive in on what we're going to see here in terms of interest rates for the average home buyer this year, Christina? Yep, absolutely. Like Katie said, they've already started going up about half percent since Christmas. That's mm -hmm. a big, big change. And when we were talking to Matt this morning, he said to expect at least two to three more substantial rate increases over the next year. Of course, interest rates change daily, so just know that those are trending upwards, but probably two to three substantial increases over that next year. Yeah, yeah we're probably going to see fours again um, mm -hmm. at some point in 2022, but our rates are still historically low, which is mm -hmm. something that you should keep in mind. I mean, in all honesty, We've been in the fours. We've, we've saw them drop um, in 07, 08, um, but we've seen them back in the fours, approaching fives in 2018 in our yep. research. Um, yep. So nothing to be scared of there, but just something to be aware of because as interest rates increase, you lose purchase power. Yes. Either your monthly payment increases or you lose purchase power. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, oh, and as a, what does that mean for today's yes. <laughs> As a good example, you know, when, when Katie says that it's going to cost more for that same amount, keep in mind that for your average buyer with that half percent increase since Christmas, that means the mortgage that you were getting, you're going to be paying $100 to $150 more per month for that same loan. Or if you were maxed out on price and that was as high as you can go, you've lost buying ability about that $30,000 mark, 30 to $40,000. And what does that mean when you were looking at 450 and now you're only looking up to 420? That might mean you are losing a bedroom, you're losing a bathroom, maybe that attached garage that you really, really wanted is now out of reach because your buying capability is maxed out. The thing to keep in mind here is that just because interest rates are increasing and your buying ability may go down due to that, that doesn't mean that housing prices are going to go down in that same field. No. Like, keep that in mind because there are so many people moving to Spokane, so many new people, and they're selling their homes other places and bringing their bags of cash here. If you've been looking at all at houses over the last couple of years, you've probably seen that, that you're competing against cash offers. So with this many cash offers in the marketplace, I really do not expect that housing prices to go down. So keep that in mind. No, and that's just the reality of our market. It's not an inventory shortage. You hear people talk all the time in Spokane in particular about how we just don't have inventory, and the reality mm -hmm. is we do. Um, and we're continuing to see inventory rise as we move further into January and continue into the year. Yep. It's not an inventory issue. It's that we have more buyers than we have houses available because we're seeing that influx um, in people moving to the area. Mm -hmm. So one of the things COVID taught us is we can work from home yeah. and we've got a great area to live in. Mm -hmm. So the reality is home prices aren't going down you're losing purchasing power as we go through this year, as we continue to see rates increase. Again, it's not scary, it's just we want you to be informed. So what does that mean to you? It means the sooner the better. If your plan in 2022 was to purchase a home, whether that's your first home, whether that's a move up or a step down or a second home, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, whatever, if your, your plans for 2022 were to purchase a home, do it now. Don't wait until the summer, don't wait until this fall, because you're losing buying power, purchasing power with every month that goes by um, with yeah. those increases. So your dollar will go further today than it will later. Yes. Exactly. Okay, Christina, so yeah, you said it at the beginning, 
We've got changes coming April 1st. What are yes. the changes that we're expecting to see come April 1st? Yes, and just like this is how we keep these Teaching Tuesdays going, this is something that we've been talking about here within our office because it's affecting our clients right now. Yeah. People who are buying second homes. So this is, you've got people buying their primary residence, people who buy second homes, which might be a vacation home or it might be some other type of a home if you're working in a different city than you live in. Yep, different than an investment property, yes. right, where you intend to rent that property out um, and make income off of it. A second home would be like a ski um, cabin mm -hmm. or a lake cabin, or like Christina mentioned, I work three days a week in Seattle. So owning a home in two different areas, those are second homes. And traditionally, a second home mortgage was very similar to a primary home mortgage. Mm -hmm. But starting April 1st, things are changing. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac want to focus their dollars and their energy on helping people get into their primary residence. So they're shifting focus, they're keeping rates as low as they can for those buyers, but the people who are buying a secondary home, things are going up and they're going up fast. So fees are increasing. What you're going to see is all of that wrapped into an interest rate increase. So if we're looking at a primary home for about three and a half percent, expect that to be closer to four and a half percent, right around in that range um, for a second home. And, uh, and that starts in April. So honestly, you've got probably a week or two if you're looking at, for, which sounds crazy, <laughs> right? Crazy. That sounds like no amount of time. But, but honestly, honestly, being real with you, you've got a week or two. It's, it's got possible. a week or two. It's totally <laughs> possible. And uh, about 10 days ago, I helped some people through a purchase for exactly the same situation. Yeah. So they're out there. It's possible. We like to rock and roll and move quickly. So yeah. if you do too then you still have time. Otherwise, just know when you're making your plans that interest rates are going to be higher if you're doing that secondary home. Couldn't be closer to that investment um, range with an investment home. Prepare to plan, um, prepare to plan to pay maybe 1.25% or so above your primary residence rate. Which really, what does that really mean in terms of buying power for the average yes. homeowner? Great. Okay. So a good example for that is if you were buying like today, if you were to call us and say, hey, we've got to get into this second home. We have our eye on it. Like, let's do this um, versus waiting a month and doing it then. That 1% difference on your payments or on your purchase, if you were looking at a $500,000 home. Let's use a $500,000 yes. secondary home. Mm -hmm. What does that, what are the metrics on that? Yes. So on half a million dollar home, that is going to be $235 difference in price every per month. month. Every month. Yep. Or if you're again maxed out on payment, instead of $500, now you can only afford about $450, which is going to be a very different home. $50,000 makes a very different home in this market. So I'm still able to put that 10% down on the secondary home, which yes. is different than mm -hmm. the investment property. Investment properties are 15%. Mm -hmm. So that that hasn't changed, yeah. but your buying power has changed. Um, that mortgage or that monthly payment is going to increase, or you're only able to afford um, a slightly slightly smaller secondary home. So big changes mm -hmm. starting. You do still have time. Um, we yeah. are trying to get ahead of this. We're trying to let you be as informed as we are because I know when I hear something has changed by half a percent, I'm like, does that really matter? It really mm -hmm. does matter. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, and honestly, knowledge is power. So we want you to be as informed um, with this information as we are because if the difference in you getting into your dream home or your first home is you purchasing and talking, you know, starting that conversation today mm -hmm. versus thinking you aren't ready until this summer, let's start that conversation today. But we want you to understand why it's important to start that conversation today. So yeah. if purchasing a home is on your agenda for 2022, whatever kind of home that is, first home, move up, move down, secondary home, investment yes. property, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We would love to help you guys make that a reality. Yes, and we'll get you in touch with this awesome lender of ours. He can give you all the...